Well, you may ask, what is Cousin Jean doing? Well, you may or may not see this video. Uh, if it works, you will. If it doesn't, you won't. So right now what I've done is I centerboard a small hole. Then I drilled this hole in two and a half inches. The next thing I'm going to do is turn the outer diameter of this down to where this three-quarter inch copper coupling goes on. And then this copper cu cu coupling will be split in half, so there'll be two pieces of it. So we'll get on with this and show you how we're doing in a minute or two. Decided to go a hair bigger on this ID hole. About two and a half inches deep as I said. Okay, short piece of power cord. I guess that's a clue. Well, Bob, one of these days I'm going to throw all the way, all these goddamn cameras away. None of them are worth a crap. But I'm not sure what I got of that last, so we'll we'll try parting this one off. This is the second one. See what happens. And that's what you like to see it rolling out a nice stream, no chattering, no grabbing. But once again, when you screw around with copper, now I'm going to clean out the inside edge of that just a little bit to get rid of a burr before I cut it off. And there you go. Later. All right, we've uh, we've turned this down to where it's a press fit for the ID for this tubing, and now we're going to part it off. Hopefully, everything goes okay. Okay, that's operation 10 of many. Alright, now what we're doing is taking a, uh, a coupling, and I'm going to turn about 10 thousandths out of the inside or so to use it for a bushing driver to push those other slip rings onto that nylon. And of course, we'll have to remember to mark this thing very well, so or throw it away, so nobody tries to use it as a real copper tubing fitting. I have an idea they would have a little bit of trouble keeping the leak down on it. And I need to go in a good inch. We're probably getting pretty close. going to take a cut coming back out. I want to make sure that this doesn't get stuck on that piece of drill on plastic. And there we are. Now all I'm going to do is face the very end of this to square it up. And there we go.
Well, you remember the last thing I said that I'd make sure and turn this driver out enough so there wasn't a possibility of getting it hung up? Well, I just spent 10 minutes getting the, this dang bushing back off. Of course, now this time it'll probably be so big that it will straddle the slip ring I'm putting on. We'll see. Still not turning real nicely like copper does, so... Right now, what we've done is we've bored in a half inch hole in about not quite five eighths of an inch. And we're going to final drill this to the minor diameter for a five eighths by 11 TPI bolt. So a bolt something like this, this will screw onto the top of it. And uh, you can also find those in, in the charts I gave you. Um, 5 8 11. Here it's 5 2 26 6 is a minor diameter. Or you can take a pair of calipers and measure it. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. But anyway, it's 5 to 25, close enough. So now all I have to do is find some way to get this hole close to that. And probably the only way I'm going to do it is with the inside boring bar that I use to turn out the copper bushing. So, later. Okay, over where my finger's at here, this is a stop to keep the carriage from going too far. And this should be about the final cut. Feed it in until it hits the stop. And that should be our inside diameter to tap it. So 5 8 11. All right, right here, Bob, we have the uh, spring loaded center in the tail stock, uh, applying considerable pressure to the tap to keep it going in straight. And this tap is very it's very sharp and it's grabby so it uh, has given me a little bit of a trouble going into this nylon so I'm having to uh, run it in clean it back it out now the good part is we don't need to go in very far and I don't dare go in so far that I bottom out in the hole because it's a strong 5 sixteenths on the other end. So hopefully we're in far enough for a bolt to go in. Like I said, all it has to do is support this piece. There'll be no pressure really on it. So we get it out of here and take a look. <laughs> uh, that drill on is kind of rough stuff. It's gonna, it's gonna work out okay, uh, but I'm gonna have, have to really, probably use something like a pair of china locks. I would cut a hex on the outside of this bushing, but I don't want to lose the strength. So anyway, that's it for now. All right, we're doing a, a little power uh, die cutting, thread cutting. And uh, this is a mock-up piece 
that I'm going to be making out of uh, steel, but I figured I'd do it first with wood. Uh, so what we're up to right now, uh, this is a miter gauge, uh, not my real good one, but one anyway that's fairly good, that has a, a lock down so it fits in a, a, a T-slot in the table saw. And I'm putting a, a pin in here, I'm going to, I've drilled this with a number 7, going to tap at quarter 20. Stuff is rather hard. Uh, that's in an effort, that's going to be the center pin to turn a 41 inch diameter pair of discs uh, for your uh, rotary table. Um, hopefully it works. I have to have a way to lock it down and to also gradually put it in to get to my final diameter. Uh, we're talking a sixteenth of an inch or so. So anyway, you've seen me tap a lot in the past. It's uh, nothing new there but anyway this like I said this stuff's pretty hard so I um, I hope I don't break a tap off uh, the good part is is that I could grind the tap off on both sides and uh, still probably get away with using this miter guide getting rather getting rather tight on me uh, Not really wanting to back up well to clear the chips, which is uh, kind of normal on these taps. This is one of the spiral taps that you're supposed to tap just all the way through with, and it does not do a good job of clearing uh, the chips, and you should never use them in a bottom hole scenario just because the chips have no place to go. So with all that said, we made it without breaking a tap. Hallelujah. Well here we have a, a 41 inch circle of plywood mounted and we're, we're setting with the center bolted, kind of bolted down uh, in one of the rip guides. Uh, rip fence guide of my uh, big table saw. Now getting down here, as soon as I can get all this set up. Now none of this may stay put when I fire things up, but uh, we just have a friction fit. The bolt is going down into what you saw me drill and tap and pressing against the tabletop. So hopefully that's enough to keep this router from grabbing this huge hunk of plywood because if it does, uh, probably all sorts of bad things are going to happen. And I have to turn it counterclockwise so we're turning into the bit. So here we go.
Okay, well that was a long video, but I couldn't stop. Later. Alright, so uh, here we are with the bottom part of the big round table mounted permanently now to the roll around cabinet. And all of this setup is to cut a square recessed hole in the base. And this will help me I'm going to recess this quarter inch thick steel plate uh, into the tabletop and that's going to have the 5 8 inch through bolt that holds all this mess together and I want to keep that as compact as I can the distance between the bolt that supports it the bottom and then thereby supports the ball bearings in the top I don't want a lot of room because the bearings that go around the edge and roll around the perimeter of this thing uh, I don't have a lot of room to put the through axles through to hold them in place so anyway <clears throat> this probably won't turn out too good on the video and Lord only knows what's going to happen but you got to find the power switch first Alright, here's, uh, here's my welding fixture. What I'm going to do is weld this three inch piece of quarter inch plate. This is my washer. So this goes just like you see it. Uh, this end down, this end up. So this will have the upper turntable on it. So down here I've uh, grooved this and recessed it. I'm going to get in between here and tack it then turn all this around, tack it again, and then weld it. I, I want this to be as uh, at a perfect 90 degree if I can get it, but it, it probably won't be. So you may have a little high speed wobble in your Lazy Susan. Okay Bob, uh, in order to turn a hole that's tight enough to hold this bearing or a pair of these bearings that's going to center everything. Uh, I ground the set off the outside of this bit. It's a 1 and 3 8 so uh, if you so desire you'll be buying me a new bit. Later. Okay, uh, this is a mock-up now for our centerpiece so this will be the main table and this will be an addition on top of it, screwed to it. These have both been cut with an undersize. Um, yeah, yeah. Bit. You saw me grind the teeth off the outside of it. Hole saw is what I was trying to think of. And I was trying to figure out. I would have. Uh, I would have liked to use a uh, bearing that goes on the bottom of a sliding glass door. But seeing it's only going to be riding on Formica here, this will be covered with Formica. I chose to go with a, a regular size ball bearing. It'll give you a lot of room to run on the Formica so it won't cut it. But now I'm in the process, I have to turn 5 8 by 3 8 thick with a quarter inch center hole to put in here. Alright, this is a piece of 5 8 aluminum stock and I already pre-bored it with a starting hole. 
this is going to be the center hole where the shaft goes through the bearing. So this piece I'm turning right now is just an aluminum insert to take up the slop. And anytime you're working with aluminum, uh, WD-40 is one of the better lubes. For some reason it doesn't allow the aluminum to gold and stick to the bit quite as bad. So what I'll end up doing is turning this a ways, bring it out, turn the OD to fit the inside of the bearing, and then I'll part them off three-eighths of an inch thick. So it would be nice if somebody carried all this stuff, but you know, not many people carry much anything anymore, so you, if you want anything special besides a quarter or twenty bolt, you're going to make it yourself. All right, later. Okay, here we're going to take a cleanup cut on this thing. It's just a thousandths, probably. Get it to where it'll slide on the bearing. And as you can hear, I'm running the uh, power feed. Running at probably an inch per minute, so this will be a, a rather lengthy little video for not showing you much. I think you've seen enough watching the grass grow. Anyway, pull your stalk all the way up to the chuck, use a center to center it, pull it back out, touch off, and then just skim it. Now there's a lot of conversation out there that you should center it with the material hanging car out here, and uh, I don't believe it, but anyway, later. What we've done now, we've uh, set up these bearing inserts here, uh, bored a quarter inch hole through the center for the uh, shaft for the bearing to rotate on that will go in the Lazy Susan. This has been turned to the outside diameter and now what we're going to do is the, the bearings are uh, three eighths of an inch thick. So I simply line up the cutoff bit here and uh, take this bit and come down. You probably can't see it, but if you remember the stop I made for you, um, it simply sets in here like so. Tighten up the, the stop. Take the piece out. And then when you rotate it all the way to the stop, you will have exactly the length insert that you need. So we'll go ahead and cut this one off. Well, you see what happens using cutoff tools. Well, I've had this uh, parting tool for about 30 years, and I uh, can't believe that uh, aluminum hanging up snapped the. Uh, an inch right off the end of it, so I've got to take time to regrind the bit. Be back. Okay, let's try this again. We've got the bit reground, and uh, this time we'll slow my feed rate down just a little bit.
Hopefully, uh, I think what happened the last time, maybe I didn't have the chuck tight, and it actually pulled it back into the chuck a little bit. One thing you have to be careful is when it's just ready to be parted off here. Um, take the cut real slow and be ready to stop it. Now before I part it off, I'm just going to knock the edge on each side. That way when we go to press it into the bearing, it'll go in just a little easier. Okay, we're about ready to hit our quarter inch hole in the middle and this is also a good chance for the bit to get hung up but if you back that center out there okay you heard it so we're going to back it out Drop this piece out. And we'll set it up for the next one. So we're going to have five of these to do. Talk to you later. Uh, what I'm going to show you right now real quick is how I keep, when I'm trying to cut like a narrow strip of Formica, to go on the edge of a project, three quarter inch, one inch, two inch, whatever it is. Most most rip fences do not set tight enough to the table. And if you see that Formica is going up underneath the rip fence. Now I'm telling you what's going to happen. You start through with a full four eight four by eight sheet and get about a third of the way through it, it starts sliding under there, you're you're in trouble. So what I've done already, I've set this to a, a little less than an inch and a quarter. And I made this board years ago. As you can see, it's pretty well used up. There's a little piece bratted to it right on the end that fits right over here in the slot between the rip fence and the table. So you simply set this thing down, push it in a hole, and now what happens that slot that was under the rip fence has disappeared. So when you go to do your material you simply set it on top here like you normally would and of course it, it can't get through. Now keeping your fingers at a safe distance what you want to do is fire up your table saw and raise the blade to get the uh, saw blade to come up through whatever the location is. Uh, Okay, so now you're uh, you're ready, and if you happen to have uh, fingers that will bolt here onto the side of this, that has a tendency to help keep you the thin keep the thin from mica down. And I'm talking something like this bench dog uh, contraption here. Of course, this is backwards; it would have to be mounted going this way. But anyway, it simply holds your material down. Okay, Bob, how could this ever go wrong? Here's your roll around table holding up this end of a full 4x8 sheet of uh, flimsy ass Formica. Alright, we come down here and out beside the table saw, I've got uh, one of these rollers set up to hold things up. On down towards the end on the out feed, we've got this one holding this end up. We've got a piece of uh, three quarter inch angle, 10 feet or 14 feet or whatever it is long, going the full length. And of course, all I'm going to do is nibble off that little inch and a quarter piece. I need two of them. And I won't even try to film this in case something goes wrong. Uh, 
you can make up some sort of a story later. Well, I know that was a real cliffhanger for you, but there we are. There's one long piece. Of course, one wouldn't quite go around the circle. The second piece is going to set in place. And really, the good part, see, get all those things, and there's the other side. Didn't work out perfectly, but close enough. Okay, we've got most of the uh, edge piece of Formica glued on. Uh, it's just all scrap, so there's a lot of pieces. So here we go, we're trimming it off. Gonna stop there uh, due to I, I still missing a piece coming around here, and I don't want to get too much of the uh, shavings into that before I put it on. Best little trim router ever made. It's a Bosch Colt. The only router I own that when you loosen the collet, the bit comes out. All right, well, with the contact uh, cement fumes and a nice cold beer, things are getting a little more enjoyable out in this warm shop. So, one of the things you have to make sure you're doing when you're using a laminate trimmer with a ball bearing lead is take lacquer thinner and clean the contact cement off the ball bearing because it will build up quickly. I guess a minute of that's about enough later. Bob, after uh, getting the laminate on, I already had pre-cut this square hole in here. And probably I should have put the laminate on before I did it, but what I did to uh, fix that is this bit is one that Dewey Mitchell grown for your dad and I it. carbon grinding a solid carbide and it's a one of the first laminate trimmer bits and uh, I had to grind the bottom off because it had a rounded bottom so it actually fit down all the way to the bottom but that's what trimmed this out and did a very nice job okay so we got the uh, Formica on the base piece now now we have to do some thinking again. Okay, deep hole boring. Something you don't want to do. But with this, I've got to get through six inches or so of this 5 8 rod. And as you can see, uh, when I welded it, it pulled both ends a little bit. Hopefully it won't affect what's happening. But I'm going in about uh, two and a half turns, which is a quarter of an inch and then backing it out, clearing it, 
and you can hear when it starts grinding and getting really gritty, it's, uh, it's time to uh, re-oil a bit. And I don't see much difference in good, high-quality cutting oil for what I'm doing and just plain old oil. Uh, engine oil is a fact, even drain oil, if it, of course not out of your diesel, but uh, under no more circumstances just plain old uh, engine oil, gasoline engine oil would work fine. Alright, now also what I've found on this deep boring is that I'll bore in a, a ways with quarter, and then 5 sixteenths is my final size. So if I went in an inch with the uh, quarter bit, and I'll bore in with the 5 sixteenths till I bottom out, then I'll go ahead and go back to the quarter, and this gives me a lot more room for chip removal. And as you can see, I bottomed out there. So now I'm going to go ahead and change back to the quarter inch bit and go in another inch and then do it all over again. We'll get through this later. Hey Bob, uh, what we're doing right now is you saw me make the two thick pieces and this is a piece of three quarter inch oak plywood that was narrow and I didn't have a four by four piece, so I decided just to butt glue, edge glue two of them together. Well, they were so much difference in thickness that when I sanded them to make them look good, I went right through. Uh, so, I'm going to permanently attach this to the other piece. And right now I'm making them the same size. using a ball bearing lead bit. Now this is on the bottom and they make them with the, with the ball bearing up the top. So this is pretty rough going, but it does a pretty good job. So we now have three pieces that are pretty much exactly the same diameter. And this is the second time I've cleaned the floor up. So we're generating a lot of dust and dirt for me not to try to the house to Peggy. Well, we've got the... Uh, Set this thing upside down so my original good side is going to be the bad side. And we're in the process of uh, hooking the uh, two pieces together here. So we'll have a, a total of about an inch and three quarter. And I've got the uh, screws all laid out. Pre-drilling all the holes.
And I'm not just sure how many screws there's going to be. Probably about 20. That ought to hold this together. Just a nice round number, don't you know? I used to think that these small drills were a waste of time, but as you get older, they actually become nicer to use. Alright, well, about 10 or 12 more screws to put in this, and uh, it will be hooked together. Well, what we're doing right now is putting on the uh, edge banding, and the only way I've ever found to get this stuff to line up perfectly is to do something like, like this, and I'm using the top of the table saw to line everything up. All right, now, I have put the contact cement on the wood here, but the last piece of uh, Formica that's going to go on, I have to dry fit it and make sure it fits perfectly before I stick it in later. Hey Bob, this is the uh, final trim on the, the top of the edge Formica. Okay, that's uh, what I do, and I'm going to take a belt sander with a very fine uh, abrasive on it, and uh, sometimes those router bits are just a hair off, but we'll trim this up, and then i got to go back and try to find a piece of Formica in Ron's attic next door to, to put the top on. I've got two sheets down, but they're... They're the thin stuff made actually, I guess, for doing doors, and I'm not sure I want to use it. All right, I, I think this is uh, the final trim job. Got the uh, 
got the heavier top. I went over and dug through Ron's stuff some more. And uh, the more I look at this, this looks like something your granddad would have done. If you remember the shingles on the back of the uh, Konings Trading Post on 19, the front was very nicely done with all matching shingles. The back was done out of every spare shingle he had ever had. So with that said, off we go. Okay, now for this. All right, what we're doing now is I have to get a inch and a quarter hole straight down through an inch and three quarters worth of plywood. So I used this scrap plywood and made a jig. I drilled those in using the milling machine so I know they're straight. And then I, you saw me cut down the the teething off the outside of the hole saw. All right. Then of course I didn't realize but there's a fairly good weld holding the saw to the arbor itself. So I had to chuck that in the lathe and turn that off. So now in theory uh, this should bore a straight hole down through uh, I'm going to have to do it in a couple sections and pry the plugs out because there's not enough room for inch and three quarter up inside. So I have this firmly screwed down to the base and I'll probably climb up on top of the table saw to do the work. It's getting there. Now well, there's the drill jig. And there's a success story. I won't be able to get it in marble press to press them in, so I'll probably just have to relieve the top edge a little bit and drive them in with a hammer. What we're making right now is a, um, a jig to keep the base of my big plunge router where it belongs. Um, I need to cut slots in the bottom of that big lazy Susan for an uh, inch and three quarter ball bearing by slightly under half inch to go into. And I want the pockets all uniform to the same depth and the same width and all that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a plunge cut on this three quarter. When you're cutting in this direction, hang on to the board. Okay, then we got to do these two sides here, and we'll have a, a square hole in here for the router. We'll cut just from slot to slot. So this is six inch wide and this is six inch plus the diameter of the bearing. So it'll allow me to cut a slit so wide. All 
All right, there's my uh, alignment line. I guess you can see it. Anyway, it runs from the center all the way out to the outer edge here. That allows me to set the jig up. All right, now, there are a lot of things to get lined up. There's my center mark running off into the center. Here is the center line on the jig. Okay. And it's lined up with this center line that I marked out. That's fifth of the way increments. And then far out here is the outside one. So that just lines up the axis of the bolt that the bearing is going to go on. And then in here, I use the outer line and this line. Same on this side, outer line and this line. Sorry about the jerky hands. Okay, here we go with a plunge cut. And you really have to hang on to this sucker because this is three horse. And it's about all I can do. But this stop is set. And what I do is I plunge down away all the way across and then make a cut. And that's the pocket that this bearing will go in, and it will drop, actually it's not quite bottomed out now, but it won't be quite that far down in the pocket. Okay, so I got three more of these to cut, and that part will be done. What we're doing right now, Bob, is, is uh, making a jig uh, to drill the axle spindle, the bearings, spindle bearings, uh, the shaft work. Uh, the hole's actually going to be quarter twenty through the bearing and a uh, quarter inch diameter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a number seven and drill up into the, the wood, the base, and just thread it in. We're not going to thread it with a tap, we'll just thread it with a bolt doesn't really have to do anything but except keep the bolt backing out. Uh, so right now this guide, uh, it's hard to see it, but on, on this side that's a quarter hole and this is a number seven hole. Those are already drilled through and I have to, I've removed about a half inch of stock off of this block and I've got to move, remove about another inch. And then that will allow me to clamp this unit up under the table. So anyway, with all that said, here we go. Now I can take about 25,000 to the knee to cut going this direction, which is a normal cut, but I can only take 10 or 15 on the climb cut going backwards because it would be like running a piece of lumber through a, a 
table saw backwards from the outfeed side. It'll grab it and go like hell. So anyway, this is just a, it'll be a 10 or 15 minute process just removing metal. Makes life lots of chips and shavings. But the only way I could come up with is to get the axle holes. And uh, what I'll do is drill the number seven all the way through first and then do a follow up with the quarter. Uh, all right, well, later. Don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but what I'm doing is uh, cutting a slot in, in some quarter 20 bolts. Okay, we're going to go fast. Uh, here's, here's what the axles for the bearings look like threaded on one end. This is where the bearing will ride. And this is, if you ever have to take it in or out, is the uh, slot. Okay, but I do not have a tap that's deep enough. So where we're at right now, I'm not ready to tap it. So this is the small hole. This is the number seven, number seven bit. Alright, now, I'm going to shut the camera off because I've only got like 40 seconds of recording time left. So here's the unit, there's the first hole I drilled. Now the second one I took a bolt and tapered the end. And, uh, of course you might know it's full of crap. goes through and I'm going to run that in to the original number seven hole okay that's in an effort to line it up perfectly with the first hole. So that's through the quarter inch side. Okay, we'll quickly drill the real quarter inch hole. This is where the main body of the bolt goes. Okay, I don't have a tap long enough to tap, so I'll just use a quarter 20 bolt. Run it. and hopefully get it back out. And here we are with the last 27 seconds of my record time putting in the axle. And there you go. Ball bearing for it to run on. Okay Bob, we're going to retry this again when I have more than a minute and 30 seconds left. So anyway, here's the adapter I made so we can drill the holes and hopefully get them in the thing square and running true with each other, those five bearings that the unit rides on. And here's one of the axles. Simply a bolt cut off put it in the milling machine, cut a slot in it. So, 
the two holes in this thing this is a uh, number 7 bit which is a tap size for quarter 20 and this is quarter inch which, which is the diameter of the the axle that's going to hold the bearing and then the bearing sits on that of course so anyway the first thing we have to do is we've got a center line here and I put some kind of eyeball center lines on here doesn't have to be exact but close is always good so the first thing we do is we put this unit on try to center it the best we can tighten it down so it does not move then we take a number seven bit and go through the small hole which I have marked here as number one by the way this is the last one So. We go in full depth. Okay, and then the next thing we do is we take this off. And to line it up, here's an, a quarter 20 bolt, and I've took the sander and sanded, put a taper on the end, kind of like a self tap. And we put it through the quarter 20, a quarter hole. And uh, I'm getting pretty good at. Uh, Swinging. I've got a pair of quarter inch nuts that I put in the socket and uh, every time I do this I swing them across the room but anyway we put that in this the number seven hole screw it in like so and there went the nuts on the floor again oh well Put the clamp back on. Pull the bolt back out. Now we use another drill with the quarter inch bit in and we only go in to the pocket not up where the threads are at. Okay, and then we take this back off. And now we're actually ready to put a bearing in. And someplace around here, I had a shim washer. Now let me stop this and find the shim washer. So what I've done is saved myself a lot of embarrassment putting these. These are metric uh, washers, and I like them. They're small diameter, so it's like a quarter ID, but yet um, maybe a half plus OD instead of three quarter. So anyway, I got the uh, the shim washer in, the bearing in, everything started and lined up. Simply going to thread the stud in. And I think I mentioned before, I didn't really have a, a tap that was long enough to get up in there that far. So I just used a quarter 20 bolt, a long one, with the impact wrench. And kind of pre-threaded it. Not exactly sure how strong the slots are, but I put in the anchor bolts, the axle bolts. Clean the little burr off. And there we are. So now all five rotating bearings for the outside support are in. Center hub bearings are in. Everything's securely fastened all the way around. Lots of screws holding things together. So I don't know if I'm going to try to set this on the uh, on the main part of the table myself today, or wait for Les to come tomorrow. 
most of my neighbors in worse shape than I am, so it's it's kind of tough to get someone to help you anymore. All right, later. Well, Bob, I think you already pretty much knew that I wasn't going to wait. So there's the finished product. Support, I think, worse than any kind of weight you want to put on, including me. So now the next thing is I gotta I gotta design a lock so where you stop this thing you can keep it in place. And then nextly I've got to get wiring up through here and uh, make a housing to house two contact wipers up here and then figure out the uh, duplex outlets that go up here. So it's coming. Seems like it's a pretty long process compared to what I thought it would be, but later. Well Bob, I'm quite sure you don't believe that I've messed around with this damn electrical for an hour and a half already this morning. But I think we're about to get it. Alright, uh, I had a piece of scrap corian that came from Ray's cabinet shop. That This was before Ray passed away, he gave it to me. And this is the last remnants I have. It's a half inch thick and it's pretty goddamn hard actually. So what I'm doing right now is drilling uh, holes in it. Seeing that they don't have to be extremely accurate, I'm lining up right on this corner and just flipping it, lining it back up on the left hand side of the vise, and that'd put me probably within one or two thousandths of an inch. And this is nothing but a box to cover up the uh, the electrical connections up on top. So now I'm going to take a 60 degree and uh, countersink those for the, the heads of the, the flat screws. Now the sad time, sad thing about this time is I can't just turn them over. So I'm going to have to do half of the holes from one end and then half from the other end. And I always take a screw and try them. Fits very nicely. Just flush. Now these are the last two set of holes to put the little square box together to cover up the electronics. And if you ever want some good clamps, I, I know you've seen me use these before. The name is K-A-N-T-T-W-I-S-T. -T -T, so it can't twist. And they're the handiest things. They come in about half a dozen sizes. And every once in a while, MSC puts them on sale for about $109 for a pair of three different sizes. So what I'm doing now is I'm going back with my original bit, turning it upside down, putting it in the chuck. And I'm going to use this to try to center the holes. Goes in that way, but we're off all oh, of some. Look, now the camera's going to move.
I take that alignment bit out, this is an eighth inch bit. It's the pilot for the screws. It's uh, big enough that it won't split this core in when you put a sheet metal screw in it. I tell you what, this this Corian is some pretty tough stuff. Hard to get the uh, hard to get the material off the drill bit. Uh, some of it you just have to pick it out. But anyway, so now I'm going to roll this thing over and mount this with a single screw, and that will allow me to line this up here. All right, and here's uh, the last hole. If there's a last to any time you're doing as many of these as we're doing. Uh, we'll move the camera out of the way. How's that? That was secret stuff you didn't need to see it anyway. Later. I don't want to pro about my own workmanship or anything like that. But I want you to look at the fitting going around here. Not that it makes the hill of the beans difference, but you know, when you're making it for a special guy like you, you got to do what you can. Later. Alright, uh, I got the little uh, wiper arm piece made for inside. And uh, right now we're going to use this quarter 20 brass flathead bolt. And we've already drilled the through hole. We're going to countersink it. And this bolt will not be hot. So don't worry about anybody getting hurt on it. to do it. Okay, later. Yeah, Bob, uh, what I'm making right now are the the brushes for the slip ring. And I have no idea what kind of tension it takes and I have no idea how malleable this piece of brass is. I may have to anneal it to soften it up um, but anyway, we're, we're working on it. And what it's making me do, um, my parallels, uh, I don't have the exact size I need, so I'm getting as close as I can to the jaws. So, this is the way I do it. Um, I take a business card. This is a 3 by 5 index card. And I keep loosening it up. Right there I lock it. That's about five thousandths of an inch and I don't want to run the cutter any closer to the table. And even with all the precaution, it's really easy to end up buying new jaws because that's carbide and it really doesn't care what the, the jaws of this thing are made out of. So, there's another one and uh, now we'll kind of figure out, we'll get them mounted and see how they act and get them bent to where they're touching and 
and you see what happens later. Well, here we are. <clears throat> it's about, I guess, four and a half hours into this stupid little piece here. Uh, I'm still not sure that these are going to have enough flex to do what I need them to do. I've been all over the internet looking for how to anneal brass. Um, the only thing I can find is for rifle cases. One of the problems with this doggone plastic uh, countertop material is, man, I have not found anything that drills it nicely. It, it loads up. You can take just a little bit like so, and you, you can't just knock that off. I've tried using WD-40. Uh, I've tried oil. I've tried grease. And it loads up these bits to where you just have to stop and pick it off, like so. And you only get about an eighth of an inch. So now you can see why this takes a while. I'm not sure what they use. But it's something a whole lot different than I have. I've tried different bits. And uh, I've tried different speeds. By the way, these two lugs right here uh, are where the, the outlets that go to the grinders and stuff will hook on. Success. Later. Okay, Bob. Uh, well, anyway, my first try on this didn't work. And what I had done is got some JD weld on one of the slip rings. And so I had a flicker on the way around. It took me a minute to find that. But there you are. Two slip rings and everything in place. Okay, Bob, here's the, uh, the finished product. Two contacts, two slip rings. And what I found is I had put some uh, JB Weld up here just kind of secure all the wires uh, in case they get tugged on down below. I'm going to have them in conduit, but who knows. Anyway, some of the JB Weld got over on the slip ring on the upper one. So that's what, uh, that's what made it act up on me. So there's an around the world picture of how it's going to work. So the next thing I have to do is get the pigtails put in through here. I'm going to put six outlets. It'll be on two little short pigtails and uh, get a cap made for it. And I'm just going to buy a number 12 a good extension cord and cut part of it off and, and use it for the inlet. Okay, layout for lid, pretty easy. Set a distance here, scribe it, scribe it. Turn it around, do it the other way. Not that most anyone really cares, but that's how I do a simple layout. There you go. Here's a picture of the inside of the finished product. Everything's tie wrapped out of the way. Should should be in good shape. Went ahead and put ties, keep people from pulling these cords out. Shouldn't be much stress on it anyway. Okay, <clears throat> last couple holes on the uh, on the lid. Probably going to hit the camera, but all right. Next project, we'll uh, countersink those for the flathead screws.
Well, you know how projects are. There's just one more thing that's got to be done. Here's the completed top and electrical. Here's your six plug ins. Here's the electrical in. Got a 90 degree with a rubber compression grommet. A little hanger on the side. I guess the cord is about 15, 16 feet long. Next thing we're going to work on is a couple shelves to put in it, and then we'll see what we can do about laying it out. Okay, shelves are in place. They pull out. They'll hold, you know, 20-30 pounds without tearing up the back side, but you can slide them out quite a way. All right, we gotta we gotta come up with some kind of a a door lock to keep this thing shut. I just had Velcro and it's never worked. So we'll think about that tonight.